if you say he's not God, you're lying. So, uh, In fact, that the choir sang the way they sang means he's also God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, choir, for nailing it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's celebrate our choir. You people can bring down heaven. Seriously. Thank you. Help me look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor! Neighbor! I've come to fellowship with God. I have come to fellowship with God. Somebody need to help you for this. Help me look at another neighbor. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. I come to love God. I have come to love God. Do you believe it? Yes, sir. Look at yourself. Say, self. Self. I love this God beyond your understanding. I love this God beyond, beyond your, your understanding. understanding. If you believe it, let me hear you shout. Take your seat. God bless you. It's good to see everyone alive. time I hear my father in the Lord shout I'm alive <laughs> and then I begin to imagine why is this man always shouting I'm alive and I begin to think that if you wake up you should shout I'm alive because your neighbor you slept which may not have made it. Number two, it is a sign that I am thankful for the privilege of being alive. So I'm tempted to be shouted, I'm alive! Because he has given me life. My horn is a sword. We have preached it, we have teach it, and we taught it. Indeed, God exalts our home. First of all, for being alive. Life gives you the privilege to be exalted. But as we look through the scriptures, we realize that it is the will of God that every one of us should enjoy exalted horn as a believer. But what you do For your horn to remain exalted is what matters. Anyway, that's not a saying, but it's a fact that not every one of us through this oil of greatness may experience exalted horn. Not because God does not want it, but because we have not been careful to activate it. We have not been careful to call it into our existence. There are many things 
things that will hinder your home from being exalted. But let's go back to say, who will God exalt his own? Who qualifies? Who? Let's look at it. Let's see. There was a definition that I saw. I put in my phone. I'm trying to look for it. I love that more than uh, the other ones. But I seem to lose hold of it. But look at Psalms 138. I try to get the rest. Abum, 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 I am Jehovah, abum, abum, and I am able, abum, abum, is there anything to have? For me, is he ever too late for me? Whatever it is, I'm, I'm forever the same. Cheta, cheta, it is a wala, oh, cheta, cheta, remember. Is here. Yes, sir. The Almighty is here. Yes, sir. The one we adore is here. Oh, yes. oh, be more cheta. Be that one people say. If you find it, stand on your feet. found it we will run from verse 1 quickly for what God is saying in the second service get ready but before we read the scripture the scripture says that God will exalt the humble God will do what? Exalts the humble. So check yourself. Who is humble? Kings go, kings come. There's no man who say he's forever seated on the throne but him. So a humble man is that man that recognizes him with all his heart and publicly declares so. Watch my words. Because even the devil recognizes him. But he does not go everywhere declaring it with humility. So you see that you know God is different than when you demonstrate it. Where the problem is your ability to demonstrate it. That's why you can be a believer and you come in the midst of the people and the Spirit of the Lord says, preach! And you struggle and struggle until everybody go. Because you do not have the tenacity, the strength to prove 
that you are his before all men. He said, them that will not be ashamed of him before men, he also will not be ashamed before his father. That's exaltation. Some people are only Christians in church. <laughs> are you ready now? Yes. They are only Christians in church. They will do all church thing in church. But outside the four walls of the church, they can be anything. They have no crown to stand. They have no crown to defend. They have nothing to defend. Hey, who is the humble man? Who recognized that God created him and gave him whatever he has and can take it from him and so by that submit to the will of God unequivocally please read my lips and count my words submit to the will of God unequivocally without restraint the humble the humble is not a man that put on rack because I've seen the most arrogant people are poor people I tell you hey they go that want to become I want a beast Ego may buy her car by mistake. You will know that this one, na mistake. If money know who they go meet, in for run. Are you getting the message? Yes, sir. I will praise thee with what? My whole heart. My whole heart. You can't praise God with your whole heart. Your whole heart means no reservation. With your whole heart means I don't even care who is looking at me. With your whole heart means I don't even care where I am and what is going on. I have nothing to hold back. <laughs> now check yourself at the scripture. Are you a humble person? I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods. Will I do what? Sing praise unto thee. See, to sing of God, G O capital, before other gods is a strong allegiance to the God supreme. And that's the most way to demonstrate your humility before. Now, when you will know. That your humble is when other gods stand. Now, other gods means things that command things to happen to. Yes, you didn't hear what I said? Yes, sir. They are called gods because they have ability to command things to happen. But when you exalt the name of the God of Israel before them, you're showing that you are. He has no equal. That's a sign of humility. Go ahead, verse 2. Did you see that? Yes, sir. So when you are lifting your hand, check whether it's with your whole heart. Maybe if you carry my they sing. Lord, I can't praise you with this person. I don't like him face. Now from old room, I a bit uh, uh, what's that? <laughs> you see things that we bring forth before God that expose our ignorance and expose our stupidity and the devil is working on your brain and you think you're wise you just demonstrated how stupid you are because you don't know who they are calling If ordinary president stand here, you will stand even if your leg they pain you. Now, when we call on the name of God and you say no, I won't stand. 
I won't sing. You're not a humble person. Verse 2. I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified the word above all thy, thy name. name. So I will worship him, exalt him in my humility because I recognize his loving kindness. Is there anything in your life that you remember to serve God for? Many of us have a checklist of what he has not done. But you have on the other side the checklist of what he has done for the overcoming him by the blood of the Lord wow. and by the words of their testimony. Check your soul. Where is your mind leading you? And you think you're still in the Lord. No wonder you pray. You do all kinds of things and the Lord hearken not on your prayers. In the day when I cry, thou answerest me. Crying is a sign of humility before God. A proud person can shed tears before him. How many of you know that tears means I am weak? Come on, church. Tears means I am vulnerable. So when we demonstrate our weakness before him, it's a strong sign. So I'm not afraid, I'm not ashamed of him to tell you that I'm talking to a supreme God who has answers to my needs. And a tear in my eyes without checking who look at me. Because of where I place him and where I found at myself. How many of you know that your children are not afraid to cry for their need, no matter who is standing by? Come on now, come on now, yes, come on yes, now. Sir. Even in church, you want them. <laughs> is it that they like not making noise? They are calling your attention, and the manner they call your attention. Sorry, I'm keeping you standing. Is to in the, in the expression of their weakness and vulnerability. How do you come before him? Like a proud person. Father, I command thee in this day. Bless me or I leave church. You may not say the language. But that can be the expression of your actions. And straight ahead me with strength in my soul. Where did he give him strength? Come on now, church. Where did they receive? What did the devil say he received strength? In my soul. soul. Now it means your capacity and strength start from inside. Ah. If your soul is weak, then you're weak. Because you see the conversation that will either make you Whatever definition the Bible will give you is what your soul decided to make of you in a moment. Now, church, why I'm doing this is that I don't want any one of us, any one of us, not to have testimony before the end of the year. Because I prayed and I know it is possible yes, sir. that he will visit every single one of us by exalting our horns. All kings, all the kings of the earth shall praise thee. If the kings shall praise God, who are you? Take your humility if you're not praising God. If kings in their regalias, in their exalted place, these are exalted men, rulers of kingdoms, authority makers, those are called short of what shall be and what shall not be. But when they come before him, they lift their hands 
in adoration, in praise, in thanksgiving to a king that is the king of all the kings. And then you come before him as a no as a somebody when you were a nobody. You are arrogant. You see, when they are curing sickness, it is pain. I'm not looking at your faces. All oh, the kings of the earth shall praise you. Oh, Lord. When they hear the words of your mouth. It's not when they see him. So when they hear the word anywhere, no matter from whose mouth. Oh, come on now. I didn't write it. When they hear the words of your mouth. What do you do when you hear the word of God? Imagine you sit down in church and the devil is telling you when to clap, when not to clap, when to shout, when not to shout, when to stand, when not to stand. And you need a soothsayer to tell you that it's not God that is talking in you. No, no, no. Do you need a diviner to come tell you you are possessed? Do you need a soothsayer to tell you that something has overrun your sins? I saw a mayor serving in a church as a greeter. A mayor in the United States. Welcome. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Yes. I go talk. I was told he would be in church before everybody. So his workload as a mayor alone will sink you. But you, excuse upon excuse. As my son, the way I was running, I didn't sleep. But any more I put a battery, don't die. <laughs> I put one, I will go carry battery. Before we know it, time. See the way we are running. Like, say, there was somebody at the gate where carry came. Swami. That's how I see myself. What is your attitude before God? Listen, church, if God show you, I've asked him to show some of you. Very soon, some of you will come and say you have the dream and God showed you something. If God show you what he has prepared for this church, you will ask what is holding us. Let God open your eyes, you will understand. This is not what I wrote for service, but as I was coming, he said, I take you off. Our churches around, we say, ah, this man is preaching something different. He said, yay! Someone shout, yay! yay! How does it feel that we all shouted? Let three people alone shout, yay! Yay! How did he feel? Very empty. The weight of our voice pulled down barriers in the heavenlies. Because their heart is one. So when the devil said, don't add your voice, he's trying to deflate us. Hey, we, we will start and preach this one. When he said, don't add your own, he has deflated a point in us. All our bodies eh, is body. Your head is body. Your eye is body. Eh? Your head is body. So if your eye, 
decide not to open. Is the body complete? There is a problem in that part of the body. So the devil will make you feel, must you join your voice? Does it matter? I beg no be by shouting. He said, when you hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your heart. Brother, it means there are people that hear the voice of the Lord and they harden it and say, I will do what I want to do. I am who I am. Nobody will move me. You don't need a soothsayer to tell you. Here comes a, a root, rogue, arrogant, and proud person. The Bible says, when you hear the voice, see that now. When means certainly you will hear. If you don't hear it prophetically, you will hear it as you hear me, they talk. When you hear, hardened not your heart. Church, it means I control the activities of my heart. Sit down, so. Sit down. I control the activities of my heart. I decide, even though I am under the government of God, that I am the government of my own soul. I do what I want to do. Even though God is saying otherwise. Go ahead. Verse 6 now. Have I read verse 5? No. Yeah! They shall sing in the ways Haragadabasia. In the ways Not one way. So if it is shouting, it's the ways of God. If it's dancing, if it's, it's the way of God. It is the ways of God. That's how they will sing. If you read the scripture, it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's one of the ways of the Lord. <laughs> Shout all ye people. That's the ways of God. So church, when you come into the sanctuary, become a slave to him. Own up yourself. Let him take over. And tell all my soul, be quiet. For I am in the presence of the Elohim. You can address your soul. Say, speak not a word. For I am before the Him that governs the universe. To whom governors and gods and the presidents acknowledge. Ah, he said. For great is the glory of the Lord. When you see God's glory, you go fear. Great is the glory of God. The glory of God is not God. It's a part of him. It's like a shadow. When his glory passes, and Moses had a touch of the shadow. He came down. My Yama. Israel couldn't look at his face. They couldn't behold him. Do you know why that makes a sense? I was reading that scripture. It's because Moses was in all of God. He was in total submission of God. He was in worship. He said, hide Humble, hide yourself, hide yourself in my glory. When you come to church, hide yourself, hide your bank account balance, hide your certificates, hide your achievements. Hide your societal status. 
so that you can be humble enough to fall at his feet. To be humble enough to fall at his feet. That some of us would understand what worship is. When we see men who worship, we look at them as what's the what, what's, what's all of this shamanticism and all of this show off. Hey, hey, now you they call him show off. He has come to worship like Mary. It's broken his alabaster balls. Her alabaster balls. Whatever you like, think. Oh, come on now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, let me quickly digress a little bit because when she broke her alabaster balls in worship to God, people faulted her. I thought I said something. No, not many of you understood it. That in your worship, people can fault you because they don't understand what you're doing. They will say, Hey, in a show of who does he think he, in your worship? People fought it. These that fought it, they are men that were close to God. Disciples. They say, ah, wait till he says, Mary said, he never too dead for you. Eh? With the thought say, they follow, 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 follow you. Now go bring this expensive perfume and pour it on the feet. Can't we sell it and give it to the needy as though they love the needy? They will judge your worship. There are many of us that have missed opportunities and God said, Move, go and do so something. And you sat down. What will they say? They go say, I to do. They go say this. They go say that. You miss the moment. You miss it. Because at that time, a leeway were open for you. Oh, come on. Now, water was troubled for you to jump in. And you considered someone. And then went back in retrogression of where God wants to pull you from. You're not humble. Your hands, everybody. TDCI. Ah. TDCI. I wept for you. I've asked him to open your eyes. Said that there is in your showing me, show your people. So that when I'm talking, I have witnesses that yes, I saw it. Lift your hands. Tell him, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. For every one of us has fallen short. Hey. Lift your hands. Hey. Jesus. him I can't finish this thing but talk to him my father tell him about yourself you see wait don't lose this talk don't lose this spirit eh? son don't lose it eh Remain there. You see, one of the things that is the most <laughs> rude way is that when the word is going, your mind tells you it's talking to someone else. It's pride. Because you exonerated yourself. I am not like them. for mercy as a church I've not come to just preach you and excite you you know when I come back like this I want to make you feel 
But this is an assignment because God is taking us somewhere. Play it. Talk to him.
He never said there'll be no rain. He only promised. He only promised us out of love singing. That at the feet of Jesus laid him down. So I boom, I boom. Abum, 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 I am Jehovah, and I am able. Say, is he anything to hide for? Is he ever to live for? What? I'm forever the same. Cheta, Cheta, it is a wala, oh, Cheta, Cheta, remember. Holy Spirit, hey, 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 Obi mo cheta, we gotta watch me to say. Obi mo cheta, I'm forever the same. Obi mo cheta, you are not alone. softly lift your hands church I'm sorry I'm not looking at time there's a place you want me to I surrender to you Lord I recognize my inability I recognize my deficiencies I recognize my weakness so I surrender to you from now, oh my soul, be humble in his presence. Yeah. Listen, a humbled man, a humbled woman is a custodian of God's glory. God does not give certain glory to men who will not return it back to him. You didn't hear what I said. That's what there are certain manifestations of God you will not reach in your heart and your actions does not humble come humble before him there is a grace and glory you will not test until he is the all in all in your life he knows who you are he knows what you will do if he gives you your prayer request it's deeper than what people think you can manipulate men. He even know what you don't know about yourself. Oh, come on now. Have you ever sometimes did something and you, you felt so bad about yourself? You say yourself, if anybody tells me, say, I go do this thing. I for no believe myself, but I did it. Do I have humble people enough? You say, I did it. 
because the power that is greater than you of influence on you and you lost what would have guided you and you fell like a pack of cards. Now what makes you a humble man is that you gathered yourself and came before him and said, sir, I fail. Even when I thought I could stand. I fail when I thought I was strong. I fail when I thought I had it all. And say, Lord, I fail. But what can I do without you? Gather me back. And I will recognize that I will not go in the strength of myself. Verse 6. Though the war, the Lord, be high, yet had he respect unto the lowly. Some scriptures say has regard. To respect somebody means if the person come to you and ask you or something, for the honor you have towards that person, you go out of your way to do things. Come on now. Yes, <laughs> this is a simple scripture. So God said he respects the lowly. Lowly, not be close to. Is that no matter the clothes you can always only not be <laughs> the hair where you put. You, in fact, the most sophisticated you look, and you could still come down. That shows how lowly you are. You see, one of the things that will make you that you're a humble person is to magnify the name of God in the midst of whatever that magnifies you. Or before anything that magnifies you. Your ability to go down before God at the sight of what goes down before you means you're humble. So let me say it again. Did you hear me? Yes, it is a realm that shows, exposes you whether you're humble or not. Yes, Here comes the mighty and you come in that glory. And then when you came in, you bowed to the king of kings. And the things that bowed to you saw you bowing to another thing. Meaning, I am not the ultimate. What you just do by that is roll all the glory that everyone gives you. Say, Daddy, take it. Do you understand the scripture now? God have respect. Why will God have respect? Because it is a place that is difficult for men who are his Just like you came to the office, you are all and all. You are the DGN. And they say, in the name of Jesus, you went frustrated. You think every other person will start looking at you? What would they do? They will go to the ground. DGM is already on ground, or director is on ground. Am I standing? Or at least they are arrogant in the spirit that is still standing. So God respects the lowly because of what he brought to God. He said, but I don't like the bet. But that's a fact of life. The proud, like a far <laughs> distance neighbor, not even relative. He knows him how. Afar off. The scripture was not done with the word afar. Naturally, in English, the two words were saying the same thing. Come on now. Yes, sir. But to show you the seriousness of matter, he knows him afar oh. and then off. And how can your home be assaulted when God knows you afar off? Ladies and gentlemen, this is my matter. You always come before him. They may call you a religious man, but it's a demonstration of your humanity yes, that says, I am a nobody without him. Because men runs around what protects them. Yes. 
I know the other people will help me with the time. But put your hand on your head. I will come on to you for third service. Third service will do more prayers. If God will, I'm not in charge of this thing. It will do more prayer. God is taking us from one end of a far off to a place of respect. For God to respect mortal, what other exhortation are you looking for? That God regards you, you sinner. Remember that your humble is does not avail you from being a sinner. Oh, you didn't hear what I said? It does not protect you from committing sin. No. But this is who you are. That's why David in his sins was the best of God. Because no matter whatever he do, he recognizes the who God is. No promotion that makes him see himself otherwise. Your hand on your head. Daddy, how else can we explain but to ask for your mercy? As can we explain? Verse 7 tells us, Daddy, that it all that we walk in the midst of trouble, like many of us, Father, we are in trouble. We are actually in trouble. God, that's our situation. And that's one thing we know that will revive us. As a church, you will revive us. You will revive us. You will revive us. Amen. You will revive us. Amen. In Nigeria, you will revive us. Amen. In America, you will revive us. Amen. In London, you will revive us. Amen. In Canada, you will revive us. Amen. I say you will revive us. Amen. And that's why you desire to speak to us in the way you do today. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the rods of my enemies. My enemies that started with me. That make me feel to be somebody when I'm nobody. That they bloated my, my heart. And gave me a wrong definition of who I am. Myself, my enemy. Lord, you will stretch forth your hands. That all that the enemy has wrought in their imaginations. In their craftiness. Oh Lord. You will deliver us. Amen. And thy right hand. Shall save us. Amen. Do you believe that prayer? Yes sir. Do you believe that prayer? Yes, yes sir. The Lord. Will perfect that which concerned you. Amen. Amen. With your hand on your head. The Lord will perfect that which concerns you. Amen. Because the word has come in the truth of his form. This word you heard that you are about to activate in your life. It will open door for your divine connection. Amen. His mercy will rest upon you. Amen. Thy mercy, O oh Lord, endure it forever. Amen. Forsake not the work of thy own hand. Tell him, Lord, Lord, I'm the work of your hand. I'm the work of your hand. Forsake not me. Forsake not me. Come on, cry unto him if you can. Lord, I am the work of your hand. Ah. Forsake not me.